John Diddy Combs, six new accusers uh, lining up uh, outside his door saying <laughs> uh, it's uh, time to be accountable for your actions. These are civil suits being brought by uh, Tony Busby, the attorney that says he has more than 120 people ready to file. Uh, and some of them minors, some of them men, some of them women. Kind of an equal split, uh, three different ways, actually, when you take a look uh, at it. And the accusations are horrifying, but very much in line with what we've heard thus far of the world of Diddy. Joining me to discuss, Jennifer Coffendapper, retired FBI special agent. Okay, six new ones, including uh, someone who is a minor uh, at the time. These apparently have been vetted fairly well by uh, Tony Busby before bringing the uh, the cases uh, to the court system. What's your reaction on, on all these? Well, uh, my reaction is expected. Uh, I think we all sort of expected that uh, this was coming. It was announced previously. And when we heard the initial allegations, all the buzz in Hollywood, all the buzz in the true crime community, all the buzz amongst law enforcement is that there are so many more victims. And here they come. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's a crack right now in, in the floodgate and the dam here. Uh, I, there's going to be a lot more to come. What do you make of this? This is something new. And this does not necessarily pertain to these civil cases right now. Diddy is asking the feds to release the identities of the accusers over there, the ones that are making the accusations. They claim the anonymousness of them forces them into a guessing game when it comes to trying to investigate this and gather exculpatory evidence uh, for Diddy. Uh, knowing the identities could allow the defense to challenge some of the inconsistencies in the accuser's stories uh, and locate witnesses to refute their claims. Right now, they're John Doe's, Jane Doe's, all of that. It seems like a great way to to put attention off of Diddy and onto other people, and it also would expose a lot of people who don't want to be exposed. Is this in any way a reasonable request from the defense of Diddy? I think it's reasonable. Uh, it's reasonable that at some point he has to get these names and it needs to be sooner rather than later because you can't you can't mount any sort of defense against ghosts, mm -hmm. people with no names. Now, one could argue, well, he probably knows exactly who they are by the specificity of the allegations. But nevertheless, he is entitled to know who his accusers are. Can you imagine? Can you imagine being accused by John Doe mm -hmm. and not knowing who John Doe is. I understand it is a double-edged sword from the standpoint of now they're exposed and and could face, oh my gosh, a litany of horrible things from his entourage and his supporters and his crew. He's got, you know, a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's it could be harmful, but they're going to have to come forward at some point. Mm -hmm. Do they have to come forward publicly, I guess would be the question, or can this be something under seal that, okay, yes, the defense of Diddy can find out so they can mount their defense correctly, uh, or would this be something that if unsealed, if revealed, would have to be uh, to the public? It needs to be sealed, I think, particularly at this point in time. It should be sealed uh, to protect those uh, individuals. Uh, but he needs to have them. I think this is the big problem. Even if under seal, I'm just afraid that it would all be leaked. And I'm sure that is what the accusers are afraid of and why they don't want to have their name exposed at all to Diddy. But the bottom line is they're going to have to expose their name. When these people went forward and, and talked to the grand jury and talked to the investigators, would they have been given any sort of promise or guarantee that their name would not be exposed? No, I'll tell you how this works mm -hmm. is, and we have, as an example, in the federal system with the FBI, we have two sets of informants, if you will. We have informants that we keep completely confidential. Their name is never exposed mm -hmm. uh, ever. And then we have that set that we call them cooperating witnesses. In other words, they have agreed to come forward. Mm -hmm. And so the minute you put a witness on the stand in a federal grand jury, you've you've crossed the line between what we used to call 137 and a 270. You've crossed the line between being a confidential informant and being a cooperating witness. So the minute they 
were called to that grand jury, uh, you know, they risked exposure. Uh, not that they had any choice. Mm -hmm. I will say that because when you're under federal grand jury uh, subpoena, it's not like you have a choice. Sure. It, it's going to happen uh, either way if, if the government feels that that's the direction that they want to go uh, with this. Hey, thanks for checking out the video. Be sure to follow us wherever you download podcasts, and especially Apple Podcasts, where you can get advanced episode and premium content on our premium channel right there. Also, be sure to follow us on social media so you don't miss any breaking updates on the stories that matter to you most. We're on TikTok, X, Instagram, Facebook. Just search Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi, and you'll find us right there. Again, thanks for watching.